Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's take a look at kinetic energy and falling objects. In other words, as we go to a high place and we drop an object and it drops a certain distance d, how does the kinetic energy change? What is it proportional to in terms of d, in terms of how far it's falling? And also, in terms of that, let's find out what the velocity is proportional to in terms of the fallen distance d. So the proportionality symbol is this little alpha symbol right here. So kinetic energy is proportional to what? And velocity is proportional to what? In terms of the distance that it's fallen. The way to do that is to realize that as an object falls, the energy changes from poten potential energy to kinetic energy. At the very top, the only energy that an object has is potential energy. And at the very bottom, it has zero potential energy left. And all of it has been converted to kinetic energy assuming that nothing was lost due to wind resistance or anything else. So whatever much potential energy was lost, the same amount of energy, kinetic energy, has been gained. So what we can say is that the change in the kinetic energy, this would be the increase in the kinetic energy, is equal to the absolute value of the change in the potential energy. Why do we use the absolute value symbol? Well, that's because the change in, pot in potential energy is negative because it's decreasing and the change in kinetic energy is positive because it's increasing but the magnitude of the two is exactly the same. Since the change in kinetic energy, kinetic energy can be written, well let's see here. Uh, well now what we're going to do is we're going to change the equation for potential energy in terms of mg and the distance fallen. So we can say that the change in kinetic energy is equal to the absolute value of mg times d. Now d of course is a negative quantity. It's dropping. It's going lower from a, from a certain height and therefore d is in a negative direction so we take the absolute value of that because we understand of course that potential energy is decreasing by this amount. However far it's fallen that's the amount that it's changed or that's the amount that the potential energy has decreased. We take the absolute value of that and that would be the total amount of kinetic energy that has increased. Since m and g are constants, we can simply take them outside the, the, uh, the uh, absolute value sign and what we can then say is that the kinetic energy, the change in kinetic energy is simply proportional, or I shouldn't write equal, it's simply proportional to the absolute value of the distance. However far it's fallen, it's proportional to that. So if it's fallen twice as far, it has twice as much kinetic energy, it's fallen th three times as far, it will have three times as much kinetic energy. Now to find the velocity proportionality, what is velocity proportional to as it's falling, again we can start out with our initial assessment here, that the change in kinetic energy is going to be equal to the absolute value of the change in the potential energy. And the kinetic energy change, well that would be the one half, that would be the change in one half mv squared being equal to the absolute value of mg times the change in potential energy which would be d. Well m can be cancelled out from both sides of the equation so we can go ahead and get rid of that and what we can then we can multiply both sides by 2 so we have the change in v squared is equal to uh, the absolute value of 2gd. If we now take the square root of both sides, we can say then that the change in velocity is equal to the square root of the absolute value of 2gd. And finally, we can then see that, that the change in the velocity is proportional to the square root of the distance dropped. So we can say that the velocity, therefore, is proportional to the square root of the absolute value of d. Okay, so let's summarize what we just found. Notice that there's a linear relationship between the change in the kinetic energy and the amount of distance the object has fallen, and there's a non-linear relationship between the velocity gained and the distance that it's fallen. So, for example, four times the distance fallen only means it's going twice as fast. Nine times the distance fallen, now it's going three times as fast and so forth. That's probably a good way to look at it. That's how it's done.